Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Cornerstone Quick Tips. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's video, we are going to take a look at how to set up your Cornerstone API from start to finish. Now, this is a super powerful tool and there are a lot of nuances to it. So I'm sure we are not going to be able to cover everything, but we are going to take a look at how to set things up from A to Z, and we're gonna try to cram all of that into one quick video, so we are going to move at the speed of light here, so without further ado, let's dive in. So to get things started, we need to determine what kind of API we wanna tap into. And in our case, we're gonna create a little financial splash screen that kind of shows stock prices and things like that. So this is a tool that I found called financialmodelingprep.com. They offer a free API with paid tiers after a certain number of requests, but this will work for the sake of our example. As you can see here, they have a little bit of information on how to set up your API. A lot of APIs use similar structures. In this case, it's a little bit different as it has API key appended as a parameter to the URL of every request. So we are going to go ahead and set up a free account with financial modeling prep here and then jump into our setup in Cornerstone. So we've gone ahead and set up our free account with financialmodelingprep.com and you can see they've provided us with an API key here. But before we go ahead and set up anything with the API key, let's dive into Cornerstone and begin laying the groundwork for our API. So with the latest version of Cornerstone installed, let's hover on the Cornerstone menu here and go into cornerstone settings now once you're inside of cornerstone settings we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll notice we have a button for our external api we want to do two things first we want to go ahead and activate this this allows us to now access the api within cornerstone and we are going to go ahead and click on configure which allows us to add domains to the allow list here now if you leave this blank any domains are going to be allowed in your api configurations but if you want to have some tighter security on things and not allow certain apis or people to access certain endpoints you can add those specific specific domains into here. What I'm going to do, because we want to access a few things, I'm just going to add the top level domain. So you'll notice that they have this HTTPS financial modeling prep.com. We could get specific and say, we only want to allow our site to access the search query, but we're just going to back this up a little bit. And let's just say that we want to only allow anything from financial modeling prep.com. So we'll go ahead and copy this domain here and jump back over here. And we could add that to our allow list. And now if I was setting up a different API, let's say for Pokemon, it is not going to work unless I now add the Pokey API to this as well so just to give you a sense of how you can sort of button up some of that security so now that we have that domain added into our allow list let's go ahead and scroll up and click on update now we're really starting to lay the groundwork here so now let's jump into cornerstone and go ahead and launch the builder and we'll jump into cornerstone here and let's begin creating our page now we're just going to set this up as a standard page for the sake of example here and we'll go ahead and call this our stock market API or something like that. This is going to be where we have this stock market data. Now we know that we want to use this API in multiple places throughout our site. So what we're going to do is set this up as a global. So let's go ahead and save our page here, but then let's jump into our globals. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll now notice we have this API parameter here. Let's go ahead and set up a global endpoint. And what this means is that we're going to add some information in here that we can then use and reuse throughout our site without having to set this up each and every time. So what's the name here? Well, this is just for you, something that's memorable. We'll call this our financial modeling prep. So FMP API. So that way we know what we're accessing. Now we need an endpoint and we know that we are going to primarily be accessing their V3 API. So I think it makes sense for our global API to access all the way up to the V3 and then everything else we can adjust. So anything that follows the V3 here, we can adjust on a looper provider by looper provider basis. So we'll go ahead and copy that there. We'll jump back over here and for our endpoint, we'll go ahead and pop that in. And I'm just going to expand this out just a little bit here so you can kind of see what we have. We have that full top level domain and then we have have forward slash API forward slash V3. Now we know from the documentation that we actually aren't passing headers through like a lot of APIs require. We are actually passing through some uh, attributes or parameters to the URL. And we know that because they've specified that for us right here. So we need to have API key equals and whatever our API key is that they've provided. So we could add this to our path if we were being very specific. So we might be saying that our path is the search API 
question mark API key equals and then one two three four five six right so we could do something like this the problem is that's not very reusable so what we want to do is actually get rid of the path we're going to control the path for each one of our individual uses of this api so we're going to go ahead and leave that blank but how do we append our parameters to the url well under request here we're going to add an attribute and the name is going to be api key and our value is going to be our api key so let's go ahead and grab our api key here jump back over to cornerstone and pop that value right in here now we have our endpoint we have no path specified we have our api key for verification and validation and we should be in good shape uh, i'm going to set a cache time on this to an hour but you could set this to whatever you wanted and that way we're not making a bunch of needless requests now let's go ahead and shrink things back down again and we'll go ahead and save this here and we have our first global API set up, but there aren't a whole lot of specifics here. So now that that's set up globally, that means we can tap into it from anywhere on our site when we're building. So now let's work on our page here. We're gonna just start from scratch and create kind of a simple layout here. We'll just do uh, two columns in a row. And I know what I wanna do on the right-hand side here is create a top 10 gainers and a top 10 losers of stocks. And I know that's something that I can tap into with this API because in the documentation here, if I scroll down under market overview, we have API paths for stock market gainers, and this returns gainers and stock market losers, and this returns losers. So this is great for us to tap into. So let's jump back over here and begin figuring things out. Now you could just start working on that top gainers, top losers design, but I find it much easier to start with the API tester element. And this is a phenomenal tool that's been put together to help see the information coming through. So let's go ahead and just drag that out here. Now, this is not something that we are going to keep on our page, but this is so that we can kind of see what information there is to tap into. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is click on the provider, the outermost edge of this container and jump into customize. And we, instead of an external API, we want to access the API global that we set up. So let's go ahead and click on that. And then we get to select our global and that was the FMP API that we set up globally. Now you'll notice it's grabbing our global API here, but we're still returning an error. And you can see that by the red outline on our API tester element. So now we can begin specifying a path. Now I know right now that I want to work on my top gainers stocks, right? So it looks like our path for gainers is V3 forward slash stock underscore market forward slash gainers. And as you'll recall, we set up our global to follow this domain all the way through the v3 so all we need for our path is stock market gainer so let's jump back over to cornerstone here and type that in we'll type in stock underscore market forward slash gainers and our api key is automatically being passed through to validate this request and we are now in good shape so we can see what we're accessing you can actually see right here that my api key is automatically being added in to the api request for this information and you can scroll through the response details here where i can see a list of everything that came back from that api request so this is a great starting point for us to build out our top gainers so first things first let's go ahead and create some styles that we can then begin populating populating with our data from the API. Now I'm just going to breeze through some of this here. Obviously you would set this up however you wanted, but I do know that I want a top gainers section and a top losers section on the right hand side here. So what I'm going to do, because I need two looper providers to do that is I'm going to set up two div containers and then we'll style everything inside of those divs. So we have our column here. Let's go ahead and add a div and then we can add another div. So this one will be our top gainers and this one will be our top losers. Everything else we're going to just add in inside of there so let me set that up real quick here all right, so we have our design set up here for our top gainers and our top losers. Uh, and obviously we're not populating that with any data from the API just yet. So let's get started on that. Now, as you'll recall, our API tester over here is currently looking at the top gainers path. So we're gonna go ahead and start with that. We'll jump into our outermost div here. We'll go into customize. Under looper provider, we're gonna go ahead and enable that and scroll all the way down to the bottom where we have external API global. And here's where we're gonna tap into our global API, the FMP API. Now we know we want a path for that, just like we did in our API tester to be stock underscore market forward slash gainers. So we'll go ahead and add that in. So that should now be feeding into our div here, which means we can consume this. So now let's jump into our stock row here 
come into customize and click on consume. And immediately we have a lot of information here. Now I only want to consume a top 10. So let's go ahead and come in here and say 10 items. And there we have our 10 items. Now let's add just a little bit of margin here just to make things look a little more breathable. And maybe we come in here and add just like 0.5 M's to the top and the bottom. And that's looking pretty good. Now we can begin styling this information. And what we know from the API tester element here, there are different keys that we can access. We can access our symbol. We can access the name. We can access the change. We can access the price. We can access the changes as a percentage and things like that. So first we're going to access our stock ticker here. We'll jump into our content and under stock ticker, we're going to go ahead and open up our dynamic content, type in looper field and we're going to add the key that we want to access in this case it is symbol so we'll type in s y m b o l click plus and immediately on the left hand side you'll notice our top 10 stock ticker symbols are now showing up and we'll do the same thing for percentage we know that our percentage is the changes percentage so let's go ahead and type that in here we'll type in looper field key changes percentage and add that in and immediately we're getting our percents in there now to make this look a little cleaner we could add a percent symbol to the end and because these are gainers maybe we add a little plus sign before them so they're increasing by these percents here and then our current stock price let's go ahead and jump in here and we know that the current price is the price key so we'll click on our dynamic content type in looper field key equals price and we'll add that in and because this is in usd we'll go ahead and add a dollar symbol before those prices here and i think things are looking pretty good so now we can do the same thing to the bottom part here just accessing a different path in the api so let's actually just go ahead since we've already done the legwork on these rows here let's go ahead and add that row here and we'll just simply change out this for more of a red since this is losses and this for more of a red as well since they're losses and we'll get rid of our plus symbol in there because that wouldn't make much sense and now we're looking pretty good so we'll do the same thing let's jump into our div for the losses let's go into customize let's turn on our looper provider scroll down to our external api access the global api for our fmp api here you can now start to see why it's really nice to have this global setup so i don't have to be typing all this validation api key parameters etc each and every time so we do our api global and then i just need a different path for this which as i know from from my documentation is stock underscore market forward slash losers. So we'll jump back over here and type that in here. And immediately those losers are now populating in here. And this is great. You can see that our top gainers and our top losers are working. And because these are pulling from the API, they will be updated in real time. Or in our case, they'll be updated hourly based on the cash time that we have. But we can actually go ahead and take this one step further. Under our API tester here, let's go ahead and add another row. And let's make that a three column row, but we can actually get rid of two of the columns there and we'll add auto here. So that's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add two divs here but again you could do this however you wanted to and in our top div we're going to make this 150 pixels and our bottom div we're going to add a little bit of padding let's call it two m's so we want to have some sort of current market articles showing up in here and so we can jump into our api documentation here and on the left hand side we're going to scroll to the news section and we're going to take a look at these fmp articles now as you can see the endpoint or the path here is v3 which we already have in our global forward slash fmp forward slash articles and then you could also pass through some additional parameters there but we're going to just worry about the first part so forward slash fmp forward slash articles so let's jump back over to our stock page design here let's go ahead and click on our row and go over to customize under customize under the looper provider we are going to turn on our external api global and like the others we're going to access our fmp api here now that path we want is going to be that FMP forward slash articles. So these are articles written by FMP and that should now be piping information into this provider here. Now, as with any provider, we need to have a consumer. So let's jump all the way down to our base column here come over to customize and turn on a consumer and you'll notice nothing appears to change and it should be because there should be data there and the reason for that is because if we jump back over to the row here over to customize we need to add in a data key well how do I know that well let's actually grab our path here and jump up to our API tester and test the same thing and see what the data is that's being passed through when I add that path of FMP forward slash articles you'll notice that first there's a data key of content before it's returning the article information 
information to me. So I need to access that content piece before I can access the different keys within content. So you can see where this API tester is super useful. So let's scroll back down to our API provider down here. And let's go into customize and now we know that the data key that we want to access data inside of is content so let's go ahead and type that in and immediately you'll notice that there is now more content being populated here so now we can begin accessing the information inside of this content data key here so for our div up top here i want this to be our images so let's just do an image element and we're gonna access the looper field key of what? Let's look down here, it looks like image is the key. So let's type in image and click plus and see if our images start showing up. That's looking great. Now we wanna jump down into the bottom section here and I wanna add in some sort of headline go like this here and maybe this headline is I don't know bold so let's go ahead and make it bold here and we'll make that headline the same kind of thing let's go looper field key is title and again you could add as many of these things as you wanted as long as they are in the API and you can access those keys so there we have our title and now on the column itself let's go ahead and make the column clickable and the URL for the articles is going to be looper field key and let's see, they have a link. So let's go ahead and type in L-I-N-K and add that in. Now, because these are being pulled from third-party sites and they're gonna link out to articles on third-party sites, I personally wanna open them up in a new tab. That way I still keep the user session on my site open, even though it's taking them out to a new site. And now let's just do one more thing here, just so it looks like these are clickable. This is just gonna be an easy one that we're doing. Obviously you'd wanna style it more than this, but under interaction, I'm just gonna set this to uh, an opacity of 0.5 and that way when you hover on these you'll see them kind of fade out okay that's looking pretty good let's go ahead and save and let's check this out on the front end of our site now obviously we wouldn't want this api tester up here for the real thing let's just go ahead and delete that and refresh and here we have our stock articles up top and our top gainers and our top losers on the right hand side. These articles are being fed in in real time by our API and we could click on one like AMD here, click on that, it'll open in a new tab and here is that article on AMD. I can go ahead and close that, open up this one on Boeing, click on that and there's our Boeing article. And now in a short amount of time, I've tapped into a robust external API that allows me to populate article content on this page as well as stock gainers and stock losers. As you can see, the sky is truly the limit when it comes to external APIs and pairing those with your WordPress builds. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building.